Hello everyone, welcome to theCUBE here, live in Detroit for KubeCon, CloudNativeCon 2022. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. This is our seventh consecutive KubeCon, CloudNativeCon. Since inception, theCUBE's been there every year, and of course, theCUBE continues to grow, so does the community, as well as our host roster. I'm here with my host, Lisa Martin. Lisa, great to see you. And our new CUBE host, Savannah Peterson. Savannah, welcome to theCUBE. Thanks, you're, you're, John. You're, welcome. Welcome to the team. Thanks, team. It's so wonderful to be here. I met you all last KubeCon, and to be sitting on this stage in your company is honestly an honor. Well, great to have you. Lisa and I have done a lot of shows together, and it's great to have more cadence around, you know, more fluid around the content and also the people. And, and you know, I would like you to take a minute to tell people your background. You know the community here. Um, what's the roots? You know the cloud native world pretty well. I, I know it as well as someone my age can, as we know the tools <laughs> and, and the tech is always changing. But, uh, so hello everyone, I'm Savannah Peterson. You can find me on the internet at Savvis Savvy. Would love to hear from you during the show. Big fan of this space and very passionate about DevOps. I've been working in the Silicon Valley and the Silicon Alley for a long time, helping companies scale internationally as a community builder, as well as an international public speaker. And honestly, this is uh, just such a fun evolution for my career, and I'm grateful to be here with you both. We're looking forward to, to having you on theCUBE, appreciate it. Lisa. Yes. KubeCon, amazing again this year. Um, just keeps growing bigger and bigger. Yes. Keynote, review, you were in there. Yep. I had a chance to peek in a little bit, but you were there, I got most of the news. What was the action? You know, the action was really a big focus around the maintainers. Um, what they're doing, giving them the props and the kudos uh, and the support that they deserve, not just physically, but mentally as well. I thought that was a really big focus. It was also a big focus on mentoring and really encouraging Love more that. people. I did too, I thought that was fantastic yeah. to get involved, to help others, and then they showed some folks that had great experiences really kind of growing up within the community. That was probably half of the keynote focus this morning was on that. And then looking at some of the other projects that have graduated from CNCF, some of the success, successful yeah. projects, what they're doing, what folks are doing. Cruise, one of the ones that was featured. You've probably seen their driverless cars around San Francisco. Mm -hmm. So it was great yeah. to see that, the successes that they've had and where that's going. You know, Lisa, we've done how many shows, hundreds of shows together. Yeah. When you see a show like this grow and continue to mature, what was, what's your observation? You know, you've seen many shows we've hosted together. What jumps out this year? Is it just that level of maturization? What's your, what's your take on this? The maturization of the community and the collaboration of the community. I think those two things jumped out at me even more than last year. Last year, obviously a little bit smaller event in North America was Los Angeles. This year you could just, you got a much stronger sense of the community, the support mm -hmm. that they have for each other. There were a lot of standing ovations, particularly when uh, the community came out and talked about what they were doing in Ukraine to support fellow community members in Ukraine and also to support other Ukrainians in terms of getting in to tech. A lot of standing ovations, a lot of um, yeah. uh, real authenticity around the community. Yeah, Savannah, we talked yeah. in our intro prior to the event about the, how inclusive this community is. They, they are really all in on inclusivity. And in you know, the Ukraine highlight, this community is together and they're open. They're open to everybody and they're Absolutely. also focused on growing the educational knowledge. Yeah, I think there's a real celebration of curiosity within this community that we don't find in, in certain other sectors. And we saw it at dinner last night. I mean, I was struck just like you, Lisa, walking in today. The energy in that room is palpably different from last year. I saw on Twitter this morning, people are very excited. Many people, their first KubeCon. And I'm sure we're going to be feeding off of that, that kind of energy and that um, just a general enthusiasm yeah. and excitement to be here in Detroit all week. It's a treat. Yeah, you know, I even saw Stu Miniman earlier, former Cube host, he's at Red Hat. We were talking on the way in and, and he made an observation I thought was interesting I'll bring up because this show, it's just a lot, what is the show, what isn't this show? And I think this show is about developers. What it isn't is not a business show. It's right. not about business, it's not about industry kind of posturing or marketing. All the heavy hitters on the dev side are here, and you don't see the big execs. I mean, you get the CEOs of startups here, but not the CEOs of the, the big public companies. Right. You see the doers, so, I mean, I think my take is this show's about build, creating products for builders and creating products that people can consume. And I think that is the cloud native um, lanes that are starting to form. You're either creating something for builders to build stuff with, or you're creating stuff that can be consumed. And that seems for applications, so the whole app side and services seem to be huge. 
They also did a great job this morning of showcasing some of the big companies that we all know and love, Spotify. Yeah. Obviously, I don't think a day goes by where I don't turn on Spotify. <laughs> and what it's, done, what it's done for the community, same with Intuit, I'm a user of both. Uh, Intuit was, a, was given an end user award this morning during the keynote for their contributions, what they're doing. But it was nice to see some just everyday companies, cloud native companies that we all know and love, mm -hmm. and to understand their contributions to the community and how those contributions are affecting all of us as end users. Yeah, and I think the, the, those companies like Intuit, Ar, uh, Ar, Argo's been popular, Arlon now new, um, people seeing those services, and even enterprises are contributing. Yeah. You know, so Lyft is always here, popular yeah. with Envoy. Um, the community isn't just vendors, and that's the, that's the interesting thing. I think that's why it works. To me, this event is really about the celebration of developer relations. I mean, every DevRel from every single one of these companies is here, like you said, in lieu of the executive, that's essentially who we're attracting. And if you look out over the show floor here, I mean, we've probably got, I don't know, three to four X the vendors that we had last year, and there's, it, it totally is a different tone. This community doesn't like to be sold to, this community likes to be collaborative, they like to learn, and they like to help. And I think we see that within the ecosystem inside the room today. It's not a top-down sales pitch. It's, no. it's really consensus, do it out in the open, transparency, don't sell me stuff. And I think the other thing I like about this community is, is that you're starting to see that, and then we've said this in the queue before, I'll keep, we'll say it again, maybe be more controversial. Digital transformation is about the developer, right? And I think the power is going to shift in every company to the developer because if you take digital transformation to completion, and, and everything happens the way it's happening, the company is the application. Yes. It's not IT, serves the organization. I love thinking about it like that. That's a great point, John. Well, the old, the old yeah. days was IT was a department that served the business. Well, the business is IT now. Yes. So like, that means developer community is going to grow like crazy and this, and they're going to be on the front lines driving all the change. In my opinion, you're going to see this developer community grow like crazy. And then the business side on industry will will match up with that. I think that's what's going to happen. So the developers becoming the influencers. Developers are the power source for all companies. They're in charge. Yeah. They're going to dictate terms to how businesses will run because that, that's going to be natural because digital transformation is about the app and the business is the app. So that means it has to be coded. So I think you're going to see a lot of innovation around app server-like experiences where the, the apps are just being developed faster then the infrastructure is enabling that completely invisible. And I think you're going to see this kind mm -hmm. of architectureless, I'll put it out there, that term, architectureless environment where you don't even need an architecture, it's just you code away. Yeah, yeah. We saw GitOps mentioned in the in the keynote this morning, and I mean low code, no code. I think your finger's right on the pulse there. Yeah. What did you guys see? Anything else you see? I think just the the overall, to your point, Savannah, the energy. Mm -hmm. Definitely higher than last year. Uh, when I saw those standing ovations, people really coming together around the sense of community and what they've accomplished, especially in the last two years, two plus years, yep. of being remote. Yeah. They did a great job of involving a lot of folks, some of whom are going to be on the program with us this week, that did remote parts of the keynote. Uh, one of our guests on today from Vitas was talking about the successes and the graduation of their program. So that the sense of community, but also not just the sense of it, the actual demonstration of it mm -hmm. was also quite palpable this morning and I think that's something that I'm excited for us to hear about yeah. with our guests on the program this week. Yeah, I and mean, I think the big story coming out so far as the show starts is the developers are in charge, they're going to set the pace for all the ops, data ops, security ops, all operations, and then the co-located events that were held Monday and Tuesday prior to oh, kickoff yeah. today, you saw um, web assemblies come out of the woodwork as got a lot of attention. Two startups got funded heavily on Series A. You're starting to see that project really work well. That's going to be a, an additional to the container market, so interesting to see how Docker reacts to that. Red Hat's doing great. Uh, Service MeshCon was phenomenal. I saw Solo.io has got massive traction um, with those guys. So like, Service Mesh, WebAssembly, you can start to see the dots connecting. Mm -hmm. You're starting to see this layer below Kubernetes and then a layer above Kubernetes developing. So I think it's going to be great for applications and great for the infrastructure. So I think we'll see how it comes out. All of the companies we have on here are all about faster, in, more integrated. Yep. It's very, very interesting to see. So far, so far so good. You guys talked about in your um, highlight session last week or so, excited to hear about the end users, the customer stories. Yes. That's what I'm interested in understanding as well. That's why it resonates with me when I see brands that I recognize, but I use it every day. Right. How are they using containers and Kubernetes? How are they actually not just using it to deploy their app, 
They're technologies that we all expect are going to be up 24-7, but how are they also contributing to the development of it? So yeah. I'm really excited to we're hear from users. We're going to have Lockheed Martin on. We wrote a story on Silicon Angle, the Red Hat Lockheed Martin, real innovation on the edge. You're starting to see the edge, Kate, with the edge, it's really the industrial edge coming to be big. It'll be very interesting to see. Absolutely, we got right. Ford Motor Company coming on as well. I yep. always love stories, Savannah, that are history companies. Ford's been around since mm -hmm. 1903. How is a company well, we're like in the that? home of Ford as we well are. here. We yeah, are. How have they evolved City. digitally? What are they doing to enable the developers to be those influencers that John says yeah. it's, it's going to be them? They're a great example of a company that's always been on the forefront too. I mean, they had a head of VR 25 years ago when most people didn't even know what VR was going to stand for. So I can't wait for that one. You teased the Docker interview coming up very well, yeah. John. I'm excited for that one. One last thing I want to bring up that I think is really refreshing and it's reflected right here on this stage is you, you talked about the inclusion. I think there's a real commitment to diversity here. You can see the diversity stats on CNCF's website. It's right there on, on KubeCon on, at, at the bottom. There's a link in every email I've gotten highlighting that. We've got two women on this stage all week, which is very exciting, and the opening keynote was a woman. So quite frankly, I am happy as a female in this industry to see a bit yeah. more representation. And I do appreciate just on the note of being inclusive, it's not just about gender or age, it's also about the way that CNCF thinks about your experience since we're in this kind of pandemic transitional period. They've got little pins. Last year we had bracelets, depending on your level of comfort, equivocally like a stoplight, which is, I just think it's really nice and sensitive and that attention to detail makes people feel comfortable, yeah. which is why we have the community energy that we have. And, you know, and being 12 years in the business with theCUBE, we've been 12 years in the business, seven years with KubeCon and Cloud Native. I really appreciate the Linux Foundation, including me as I get older. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point. But <laughs> you know, age isn't worried, you know, hey, you know, thank you. <laughs> there was a lot of representation. You talked about females, and so yeah. often we go to shows and there's very few females. Some companies are excellent at it. But yeah. from an optics yeah. perspective, to me it stands out, there was great representation across there was disabled people on stage, yeah. people of color, women, men of all ages. It was very well orchestrated. On the demographics and too. Sincere. Well, yeah. And the demographics yeah. too, on the age side's lower too. You're starting to see younger, I mean high school, college, uh, representation. I saw a lot of college students last night. I saw on the agenda sessions targeting universities. I mean, I'm telling you, this is reaching down. Open source now is so great. It's growing so fast, it's continuing to thunder away and with success. It's just getting better and better. In fact, we were talking last night about at some point we might not have to write code. Mm -hmm. Just glue it together. And that's why I think the supply chain security thing is an issue. But, like, but this is why it's so great. Anyone can code, and I think there's a lot of learning to have. So I think we'll continue to do our job to extract the signal from the noise. So thanks for, for the kickoff, good commentary. Thank you. All right. Of course. Let's get started. Day one of three days of live coverage here at KubeCon. Cloud Native Con. I'm John Floria for Lisa Martin and Savannah Peterson. Be back with more coverage starting right now.